Hello, wonderful people. Here we are, chapter 14, Satellite Motion. We're in section six, Escape Speed. So this is how to escape the Earth. We're not just gonna go up and orbit the Earth. We want to get away from the Earth, far, far away, and leave the Earth forever behind. So how do we do that? If we give a payload any speed greater than 11.2 kilometers per second, then the payload will escape from Earth, never to return. It's that simple. This is from the surface of the Earth, and of course it neglects air resistance. Uh, in miles per hour, it's 25,000 miles per hour. So if you could drive down the road at 25,000 miles per hour and your car ignores air friction, then once you hit 25,000 miles per hour, you could point your car up and it would leave the road, it would leave Earth, and it would fly off forever. It would not orbit the Earth, it would leave the Earth. It would just keep going further and further, further away from the Earth forever and ever. Does that make sense? That's the point of it all. You must realize that this escape speed, 11.2 kilometers per second, is faster than the orbiting speed of, do you remember, eight kilometers per second? So if you get to eight kilometers per second, you can orbit the Earth at, uh, at the height of uh, Mount Everest. And if you want to go a little, well, that's all in the earlier chapter, 14.2, 3, and 4. So this is talking about escape speed. I just want you to realize that this number is higher, not a whole lot higher from 8 to 11, but higher than what we were talking about before. And it has a different purpose. This is to escape. Okay. Quick, quick. Uh, right. So here are the other speeds. Um, 11,000 meters per second, uh, almost seven miles per second, 40,000 kilometers per hour, 36,000 feet per second, 36,000 feet. So oh, that's like seven miles. So that would be from here, North Adams, over to Williamstown. That's about seven miles away in a second. Here to Williamstown. Blink. And good old fashioned 25,000 miles per hour. And we always leave off the 20, close enough for government work. Now, remember, this speed has to be going. <clears throat> The, I'll just read it. The initial thrust of the rocket lifts it vertically. Another thrust, thrust tips it from its vertical course and then gets it moving horizontally to get into the speed required for orbit. But if you're going to go faster than 11.2 kilometers per second, it will leave Earth going further and further away and it's not going to orbit. How much work is required? to move a payload against the force of gravity? Uh, we can skip this part. A lot. We have a number for it. There it is. 62 million joules per kilogram. So the reason that, you, you don't need to know this, but the engineers use this number, and I put it in back here. The rocket engineers sometimes say, any more energy than uh, 62 megajoules per kilogram. So this is telling them how much energy, megajoules, and thus fuel they are spending per kilogram to put it into space. So 62 megajoules per kilogram means that you have to spend enough fuel for that. And how much does that cost? Well, when all is said and done, it costs about $10,000 per kilogram to put a satellite into orbit. $10,000 per kilogram. That's a lot of money. Okay, now the escape speed, this is from the surface. So uh, remember the escape speed from the Earth's surface is 11.2. But the escape speed from the surface of the sun is 620 kilometers. That's over a million miles an hour. Remember the sun is huge, it weighs thousands of times, millions of times more than Earth. Well, actually, you can look at it here. It's going from 11, oh, I'm sorry. So uh, on the order of thousands of times. So uh, now, 
even if you were to launch from the Earth and you escape the Earth, you still need another 42 kilometers per second to escape the sun. So if you wanted to leave the Earth, you can, but you're going to have to be in and around Earth's orbit. If you want to leave the Earth and the sun, you're going to need 95,000 miles per hour once you get off the Earth. So that's a lot, a lot of fuel. You don't need to know this. This is for comprehension. You need to know the escape speed for Earth and the fact that it means you're leaving the Earth. I'm not worried about 95,000 miles per hour. And then here's the escape speeds for the surface of all the planets. The sun at the surface is 620, but the sun from out here by us is 42, which is still higher than the Earth. It's four times higher than the Earth's escape speed. So. That's a big sun. Jupiter is 60. Um, and the moon is only two and a half kilometers per second to get off its surface. So you can see it's about a fifth of what the Earth's is. And that more importantly than the speed, it's the fuel. You only have to spend about the fifth of the fuel. So if you wanted to launch, if you could build a big satellite on the moon, and then launch it up into space from the moon. Yes, it's going to cost a lot of money to put stuff on the moon to be able to build satellites. But we're at the point now where we're building so many satellites, the money we would save because of the launch cost is cheaper, it's getting to be worth it. So don't let anybody fool you. I mean, I'm thrilled that we're going to build a base on the moon, and you will see that in your lifetime, maybe even my lifetime. But the reason we're doing it is because it's finally to the point that we're building so many satellites that the businesses want a base there so they can save money. Uh, the first probe to escape the solar system was launched from Earth in 1972. I was only three. Um, and uh, it only had a speed of 15 kilometers per second, which is not high enough. But we had it swing, swing by Jupiter. And to make a long story short, if you whip by Jupiter, you can get energy from Jupiter. It's a trick. It's an orbital trick to explain it. Oh, I don't want to confuse people. Maybe we'll do that in person to some people that really want to know, but I don't want to put that out here in this lecture. But it is a great trick because that's how they got to this little probe to, that we didn't have enough speed to get out of the solar system. They had it swing by Jupiter and it got out of the solar system. Now, I was only three when it was launched. I'm sure my dad had me awake for the launch, but I don't remember it. But I definitely remember this. Uh, and it, it passed the orbit of Pluto in 1984. I was your age. And that was a big deal for those of us that were space geeks back then. Now, unless it collides with another body, it will continue through interstellar space. Forever? Forever. Forever, ever? Forever, ever. And at we know that it's going in the direction of a particular star whose name I can't remember, and it will swing by there hundreds of millions of years from now. Not a billion, but hundreds of millions. And uh, it's not going to fall into the star. It's going to swing by just like it swung by Jupiter, and it will pick up a whole lot of speed, and then it will go somewhere else. And, you know, when you swing by a star, it's hard to know where you're going to come out the other side. So. All we know is that it's going to come out the other side, and then it will go somewhere else. Um, there's a picture of it, Pioneer 10, in that cheesy 70s graphic that reminds me of every space book I ever read when I was a kid. Oh, man, computer graphics are so much better. Um, anything else? Escape speeds. Oh, okay. I'll just read this. The escape speeds referred to the initial speed given by a brief thrust, after which there's no force to assist motion. So we, we calculate escape speeds from the surface because modern rockets burn all their fuel in a couple minutes to maybe several minutes at the most. Now, that means that you have to have the escape speed all done in a short time. 
but we could escape Earth at any speed greater than zero, given enough time, if we had a rocket engine that could keep on firing for hours or days or months or years. We haven't had that. Oh, wait, we're working on it. We have it. So this is an ion thruster. Inside is a really strong magnetic field, and outside are atoms, and they want to be heavy atoms, because the heavier the atom getting pushed back, the more force you push forward on the engine. So they use xenon, which is an element, oh, is it 88? I can't remember off the top of my head. It's a very heavy element. Now, the good news is this will produce thrust for months and years. The bad news is it's a very low thrust. It's not enough for us to launch something off the surface of the Earth. But once you're up in orbit, you can use, we will be able to use this someday to move around in for like from here to the asteroid belt, here to Jupiter. So uh, we have, we've already used these ion thrusters on two or three or four or five satellites now. The ones that went out to the comets those had ion thrusters and a couple others. So yeah, this is the next generation. This is how you won't get to the stars, but your grandchildren might. And they're gonna go there on something that looks a lot like this ion thruster engine. <clears throat> Basically, I hope that 50, 100 years from now, instead of just using xenon, they'll be able to use all kinds of atoms and they'll be able to just, you know, grind up the garbage and shoot the garbage out the back and use that as the propulsion. You know, right here, right now, that sounds like science fiction stuff. But if we're ever going to have a spaceship go to the to other stars, that's what it's going to take. Okay. Um, that's the end of escape speed. So here's what you need to know. What condition is necessary for a payload to escape Earth's gravity? I'm hitting the wrong button. There it is. It has to have an escape speed greater than 11.2 kilometers per second, also known as 25,000 miles per hour. So that's that. There are some homework questions. Uh, pretty short and sweet. Good luck. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Oops, wrong button.